Welcome back to Streamline Entertainment. It's your boy Marvin. Uh, we're going to be talking about a footballer, uh, basically Jack Diamond, um, whose ex-partner accused him of, of false allegations rape. Um, so let's get straight into the Piers Morgan and Censored. It's a reaction video. And also Pearl. She's um, a brilliant YouTuber uh, who's also on the panel. Welcome back to Uncensored, where I've reassembled some of my pack and brought in some new members to talk through the issues raised by that interview with the footballer Jack Diamond. I want to focus on this exchange. Do, do you think that it's unfair that only the man who's accused gets named? Do you think it would be right to change the law? I think both sides should definitely be anom anonymous. Until a point of conviction? Of course, because... Because if you had been, if the law did yeah. that, the papers couldn't have mentioned your name. Nobody would have known it was you. You would have been acquitted and no one would have known anything about it. Well, here to discuss that is my, as I said, the YouTube and commentator, Pearl Davis, associate editor of The Mirror, Kevin Maguire. Um, Kevin, it's complicated, this issue. Yeah. I don't pretend it isn't. I've interviewed a few people who've been in this position. But listening to this, this guy, he's a young man. He's 19 when this first happened. Mm -hmm. He's met someone on Tinder, which is the way a lot of young people meet yeah. other you know, sexual partners these days. Mm -hmm. But for a year, they're seeing each other. And then, according to him, and he's been cleared, and so I yeah. think his, his version is the credible one, he says they just had a slight disagreement. She was annoyed that he didn't want to have sex with her. She left in a bit of a mood. And the next thing, the police turn up. Yeah. And his life is completely upended. Yeah. You're a Sunderland fan, actually. Yeah, he played for us a couple of, t uh, couple of dozen times. Yeah. He went on loan a lot. I think he's at Carlisle yeah, he is. now as he tries to re you know, rebuild his, uh, well, his, his career. But what about his argument that why should she, who it turned out made false allegations, mm -hmm. very serious ones, why should she remain anonymous to the point we can't say who it is, but he has been named immediately that he yeah. was charged, splashed all over the papers, Flashed all over the television, suspended by his club, lost his job for the interim period until the trial, then yeah. gets cleared in seven minutes by the jury. Yeah. So clearly, having but none of this, why, why yeah. should he be? Wow, seven minutes for the jury to give um, a non-verdict of not guilty, sorry, verdict of um, not guilty. That is unbelievable. So it sometimes proves that sometimes these young women can just be doing things for money, but um, obviously the jury saw straight through it. And lucky for Jack Diamond, he can carry on with his um, football career, but I think it's gonna make him feel a bit more wary because I don't care how old, young you are and old you are, when some things like this happens and uh, it could ruin your whole career and your profile and who you are as a person and having a criminal record. It's a big, big thing. It's something that will scar you for life. Pit, forever tainted with it. Piers, in, the, in these cases, because the jury finds you not guilty doesn't mean the person has, has lied. That's not the automatic side. It's got to be a case beyond all reasonable doubt. Well, it means they didn't believe her version. Now, I, I have huge sympathy for him through what he's gone through, but I don't accept uh, creeping private justice where you don't know. For instance, people are arrested now and you can't report, you can't know they've been arrested. No, but and they're being his investigated. Point, his point, I, look, I mean, his he, point, he's, he's, he's innocent. He's innocent. We've got to accept he's innocent. Now, he's, he's gone through a terrible we don't time have that to I guess. Why, why, would, why would a woman not do it again if there's no consequence for her doing it? But look, I mean, you're, would, we're, you're rewarding, we're rewarding if, bad behavior. No, no. If, if the police and the Crown Prosecution Service believe you deliberately made up allegations, you will be prosecuted and there are cases and then those women yeah, but, are named. But, Pearl, a jury of 12 people took seven minutes. I mean, some juries take seven yeah. days. They took seven minutes mm -hmm. to find for this young man. Well, I have to say, when I interviewed him, I found him extremely... Uh, he was very polite, respectful. I believed him. Uh, and I felt so sorry for him. He could have been one of my sons. I was like, what? he's been through utter hell, and yet nobody knows anything about who this girl is. It's interesting what Pearl said that um, the repercussions basically are not good enough. She should have been charged for something or doing community service at the least 
for um, for basically wasting court time and police time as well and r ruining someone's life to be honest she should be in a prison sentence but like I said sometimes the laws for that um, are a bit too weak in my liking and like I said he endured two years of hell before being cleared of rape and that's just unbelievable I'm not saying for a moment she should be named and shamed I know. think she should well I'm sure I mean so some women probably do feel that actually I mean I just I think if we keep allowing women to weaponize the justice system against men why would they stop the, why, why would they stop there, there has probably, to be there has to be some consequence for women that ruin men's careers pro prosecutions successful prosecutions where rape is reported is incredibly low there's a yep. huge problem now I'm setting aside the the, the, the yep. diamond case for a moment it is incredibly difficult to prove and there are very few prosecutions now you can just say all oh, women are just making well, complaints they, well, they freely changed, but they no changed. they are not well, in a way no, we're having in a way we're having a slightly different debate we, we, we are we'll, all we'll right. come to that uh, on the specifics part his argument is why should he be named until or if he's convicted that he wants anonymity mm -hmm. for both sides the accuser and the accused until there is a verdict i think it should either be they're both public or they're both private right. i agree I agree. I, I don't think it's fair that you can accuse someone of a crime, you completely ruin their career, and there's no consequence for what you the police will if it say, doesn't go through the with The police it. will say that when you get some of these cases, quite a few probably, that the naming of the alleged rapist often leads many other yep. victims to come forward. And we've seen that happen. There's no doubt that can be a key factor in persuading other victims. Suddenly you have a, a mass mm -hmm. serial rapist. Mm -hmm. So that's the argument from the police as to why they want to name the people who are accused because they want to encourage potential other victims and, to come and I understand the thought process but I, I just see nowadays I mean nobody believes anyone that comes forward this with this kind of thing because so many women abuse the system so what they're doing now it's not working and I, I'm not sure what exactly the solution is but I think what he's proposing is more fair than what they have right now it does seem, the the least, it does seem the least you can do frankly I mean I've interviewed another young man uh, last year you know who, who'd been despicably framed by a complete fantasist who'd attacked herself and claimed that he had done it and so on. Um, wow. Um, I think people, not just only women, but men too, in relationships, can say things and do things. Um, I just think that it's a way to get a big payout um, these days. It's sort of a bit Americanized the way we have come and um, sometimes people do live off, um, uh, uh, d d you know, do live off rich people, what they do wrong and try and get paid off by them in many different things, not just um, false rape charges, many, many um, other things, you know, to scam money off um, a, a, um, a rich person or use them and abuse them. It's, it, you know, I think there's so many people just out there for, for 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 you know for gain that and get for free one hundred percent. And she's in jail now. She's in jail yeah. now. She was held accountable. So, and we know who she is. Yeah. She was pictured. Yeah. That, so she so, did not have anonymity. anonymity no. And, 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 and to Paul's fantasies. point, she did get named, shamed, and, yeah. and brought accountable. But I interview I interview men that this Look, happens to all the time uh, in family court. It, 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 this is this is. I, I, I'm doing a documentary on divorce, and this is really common in family court. It's different than criminal court, but the problem is they changed the definition of rape. It used to be forced sex. Now it's sex without consent. It makes it more broad, and it makes it easier for women to, to the, prosecute. In Diamond, the case, yeah, the case that needs to be answered is why the Crown Prosecution Service took the case and it's dismissed in seven minutes because there needs to be to bring a case a realistic uh, prospect okay. of a conviction. Let's bring in uh, Paula Rohn, uh, Adrian, a talk to the contributor and a family lawyer. Paula, I mean, it really did make me feel uncomfortable, this interview, um, because it's the second one like it I've done in the last few months. And both times you've got young men who were completely fitted up, it seems, uh, both eventually cleared, but will never have their name properly cleared. You know, this poor guy... Look, people are always going to still have their own ideas of, yeah, you wasn't found guilty, but there's always these buts, and that will always be um, 
against Junaid. You know, we've had famous people being um, accused for different things. Um, it's Andrew Tate, one of them, who's still going through a court case. And I have always said about the Andrew Tate case, at the end of the day, I don't think he'll be found guilty, but if he is, I won't discuss him again. Um, there are other famous people uh, who have been lied upon and it's um, said to be um, false. So it's becoming um, a big scenario uh, again, uh, basically people preying off famous people or rich footballers and vice versa, or just famous people um, in, 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 in general or people that's got a high profile. And um, it's, n it's not honest, disgusting, especially once it's not true. The first game back he plays, the fans are chanting abuse at him about being a rapist. He's going to get that the rest of his career. It doesn't seem right. Why can't he remain anonymous like all rape accusers remain anonymous until or if he's convicted? Well, we know why that is, because it's not about why we compare the defender, or the defendant, forgive me, to the uh, potential victim, the alleged victim. It's comparing the defendant to other defendants in cases. We don't say, for example, to somebody who has been accused of an attempted murder, or somebody who's been accused of abusing a child, or somebody who's been accused of armed robbery, that they should automatically get anonymity. And of course, those are incredibly serious allegations as well. But you're asking me yeah, about but hang on. Whether... When you accuse someone of, of attempted murder, we know who's doing the accusing. That They're not given anonymity. It's only in <laughs> sexual cases like rape and serious sexual assault that the accusers retain anonymity throughout the whole process. And his argument is, well, why can't that apply to the people being accused? And if they're found guilty, then name and shame them mm -hmm. to your heart's content. They should be. But if they're then acquitted... They should be. I mean, the obviously lady who done that had, um, is doing some sort of um, prison time. Uh, that basically nearly destroyed Jack Diamond's career and his future. Um, so they, they, they should be named and shamed. I, th I think they've um, done the right thing there. And nobody would ever know that they were accused of something they didn't do. Uh, and, and Piers, don't get me wrong, it's not that I don't appreciate the sensitivity of this. Of course I do. But what you're asking the criminal justice system to do is to essentially pay lip service to what is a, a distressing situation for everybody. And I understand because... Well, no, I'm asking... I'm asking he, he, to be clear, I'm not asking for anything. He is asking for a fairer system that gives anonymity to both sides until there's a verdict. And I think there's a lot of merit to that. The more of these young men I interview who are on the receiving end of fantasists or people who juries don't believe, uh, who then have to live with a stigma for the rest of their lives, the more I'm leading to thinking, well, why don't we just have anonymity on both sides? Makes sense. So this has been considered on a number of occasions. It was considered back in the 1970s, it was considered back in the 1980s, it was considered even in 2010 with a coalition government. And on each occasion when the evidence was properly looked at, the decision has always been that actually it doesn't make a difference in terms of the outcomes for the defendant, but it absolutely makes a difference in terms of the outcomes for alleged victims and whether they are coming forward. And I heard you in the interview, of course, um, address the issue that we all know that we have such low reporting figures yeah. in terms of allegations of rape. Yeah, and that, and and that, is, and and that is completely that. wrong, but I still, Pearl, I still have a lot of sympathy with this guy's argument. I, or make it, or make it more public. public. Like, if, if you're going to accuse someone, make it public. Why, why does one side get to be private and one public? That doesn't make any sense. Kevin? Yeah, right. like... Uh, if anything, I would row, I'd row it back. Uh, I agree, but like I said, there's laws in place um, for, the, for, for different things. And as much as we think, you know, it should be the same on both sides, there, there is reasons um, for that. And, I, 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 you know, I would think that um, until the case is over, people should be anonymous at the end of the day. But it seems like sometimes you're guilty and then you have to prove yourself innocent when someone accuses you of something like that, 
which is, you know, completely wrong when you say it in that sort of view. Okay, look, we have, as I say now, you can't report if somebody is arrested. You know somebody can be arrested, it might be, uh, as a politician, as an MP who's under investigation for rape, and they've been arrested, doesn't go to the House of Commons, and we can't name him legally. And, uh, yeah. we're, in, we're in the wrong I world. Think at, I the very, at the very least, what this case should do is lead to a new debate about this. Yeah, but we don't know why they're cloak. I feel very sorry for him. Uh, thank you. Um, so that is the end of the video and look for Jack himself I hope that uh, basically he can move on with this and in time um, things will get better for him uh, do subscribe to Streamline Entertainment and uh, follow the channel and let me know what you think of the case and whether uh, basically accusers should be accused from the very start or should they be named and shamed uh, later if they're guilty. Wherever you are, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and support me. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.